Right, welcome to another video. Um, this one's going to take you through how to use a data reader uh, to display information in a list view control and how to filter it with a combo box. So without further ado, let's get cracking then. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is, is going, to, going to create a list view control. So I'm just going to nick a label, um, save type and put it in again. And I'm going to call this, um, don't need to rename the label, but just change the properties on there for the label. Not the form. Right, so I'm going to change it to um, filter student dates. Right, I'll, um, I'll rather than copying that, I'll do it from scratch because um, it is quite easy to cock up a list view control. Um, so I'm going to go to toolbox, um, get common controls at list view, and so basically what I'm going to display in here is um, pretty much the same as, as the list view control above. Um, so I'm going to have student ID, student name, date of birth and minutes late. But I'm going to be, I'll filter it with a combo box. So I'll get it to work without that first. And then um, what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, to get that to work. Right, so the first thing to do is do view details on there. Don't forget to do that, otherwise it will not work. Um, if you go to edit columns and then just click add two, three, four for each one I need. Now you don't rename these, just change the text property. So that's going to be student ID. So you can put spaces in if you want to here, it's fine. You can see it's change, changing um, the columns as I go along here, the text property, but don't change the name. And one of the worst things you can ever do here is to call one name and that really ruins the entire form. So um, next one is student name. Um, again, I could put space in there, I suppose. Um, next one, Dob. I'm going to be trying to be as quick as possible, so I'm not going to worry too much about how it looks. And then Min's late. Okay, so okay, that's my list view control. Good done. Now, what I want to do is just fill it up um, with information first. Um, so, I'm going to get to do that on the form load. Um, now, you'll notice that I've already got stuff on there so I'm going to put it in a new procedure now I'm not going to copy code here um, like I would normally I'll try and do it from scratch um, so sub um, I call it filter lates because it will be filtered later and I'm going to call it from the form load event um, yeah, okay, so call filter lates. Right, okay, so the first thing I need to do is, like my other ones, um, declare a DB connector and a data reader. Right, so, um, well, I will do some nicking actually. So, control C there, B there. Right, now, um, and I'll remember to put the close in as well. Right, now um, it's important that I have that line at the top there. If I don't have that at the top, you, you won't be able to declare your um, data reader. Okay, so I'm gonna put all my code in between there and there. Now a data reader is basically an object that can get the results of an SQL query and then process that. Okay, you can just loop around the results like they're individual records returned. Right, so the first thing I need to do is actually create the SQL. So it's going to be like this. So do SQL and I've just put a string of SQL in there. Now to do that, the easy way, um, which I think I've done on the previous video, is just to create a query. Um, so I go to tables, um, here in make sure your server explorer is open obviously if not just go to view server explorer and then add the connection if it's not viewable um, new query so I just make the query um, click add close now be careful here because sometimes you get an extra link in I've seen on some students work but it seems okay so basically what it was was student ID dob day of birth and I think it was minutes late well what if I managed to do there 
Now, um, just run that to make sure it works. Execute SQL, and there we have it. Right, it's all good. Right, but there's the SQL. Now, it's a bit of a pain, basically, but you've got to copy that. So, Control C, then go back to my code here and paste that in. So, now, um, now what basically you need to do now is you can have one continuous line, but it is incredibly difficult to read if you do it like that. So the best thing to do is to break up the lines with the line break. So I want an ampersand because I'm going to join it, uh, another string, and then underscore to break the line, and then I can carry on again. So I can do the same again, ampersand, underscore, new line. So it's about three lines. And then I think that's it. Right, so that should that's uh, I haven't got an error there, so that's good. Now I can just copy the other two lines in and go back to my query now. From there, and then now what I've done there, you may notice in front of the from I put space. It's really important to do that, otherwise what you end up doing is joining. If you haven't got a space there, and I have, but if I didn't have a space, it would just join those those onto each other, and you'd just say something from all in one word, which is not ideal. So it's always make sure I've got a space at the front there, but you, you know, because sometimes you can't see the end of that string. Right, so we're going to go to do the next one now. Control C, and then paste that in. Right, so that looks good. Um, I think I've got that fine. Right, now the next thing to do is actually process the data reader. Now, so what I'm going to type now is while dr uh, dot read, that's basically saying if there's anything in there, and read it. And then I'm now going to add it to my list box, lstv. Now, did I rename my list box? I don't think I did. So I've got to quickly rename that. Bad form, right? List view one, not a good idea. LSTV filter lates. That's better. Right, go back to my code now. Um, so let's try it again. LSTV lates dot items dot add. Now, this is the good bit. So if I did dr zero. What that's going to add to the very first column of my list box, it's going to add DR0, which is student ID. Okay, so this just that's a good time to actually test to see if it works because I've written enough code now to cock it up completely. So let's run it. Now nothing happened. So it's not coming back with anything in there at all. So now I've got to see why that is the case. Um, so I've done it in the long wrong list box. LST V filter lates. Now run that again. Right now you can see. All right. So another good tip here with these things is to do full row select. So you can click anywhere on there rather than having just to click on the first one. But I'll do that later. So we've got the student ID. Now, if I want to add things um, to the student name here, all of these things are called sub items, and you have to specify which row they're going in. All right, so when I add a sub item after I've added the two there, I have to say well, it's in row zero and it's a sub item, and then it'll automatically put it there. So the next sub item will go to Dob and so forth. Um, just to show you that you know the dr0 is basically the first thing. So if I did dr2, it should display the date of birth in there. So let's try again. That's yeah. So it's playing the date of birth. Right. So I want it to be dr zero anyway. So that's fine. So dr zero is now done. Now I'm going to do the sub item. So it's now lstv um, dot. Um, oh, I've done all lates again there. Filter lates dot um, items. Now you specify a row here. Now because it's going to be, we've already added the row because the items dot add adds a row. We actually just say, well, ask it how many rows you've got in there in a moment and take one off it because there'll be one in there. Dot 
items dot count. So if there's one in there, take one off it and you've got row zero. And then dot sub items dot add. And once you've done the first one, it's just a copy and paste job. So now it's dr1 and then close some brackets. Right, so that should now put student and name next to the student ID. Oh yes, right, so that's good. So now all I've got to do now is copy and paste that. So I change that to dr2. Now if you get an error on here, often it's due to the fact that you've got null in your database. Um, a way around that is obviously to make sure you don't have any nulls in there. And or the other one is to do this, is to just go dot to string and that will just display nothing in there. Both those work. Right, okay, so that's fine now, that, that works well. Now what I want to do now is I'll filter it on the combo box. So I'm going to add a combo box above this. Right, so up here, so I'm going to go to toolbox now, add a combo box. Ah, oh, they'll do. And I'll give it a name this time, not like last time where I forgot completely. So I'm going to call it CMB um, Student Filter. I'll do. Right, so I've got to set this up now. Now you remember, magic button, use data bound items, data source. So I'm just going to drill through here until I find it. Don't click add project data source, otherwise it's creates loads of data sets and it's a nightmare. So I'm clicking on TBL student. I'm going to display the name but actually do the ID. Alright, so it's the ID will be the selected value, dot text will be the student name. Right, now before I do that, just run it to make sure it's actually filling that up. Yep, yeah, well, that is working. Good. Right, so what I'm going to get it to do now is on the selected index change event um, so as soon as I change something in here, it will change that. So I'm going to write some code on here. Now, um, I could in theory call the the one I created earlier, the filter lates one. Where is it? There it is there. But um, I suppose when the form loads, the, the combo box won't have a value and it will cause problems. So I'm just, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to copy this and put it in the combo box thing, which is all the way down the bottom. Now, now what I need to do now is change my SQL here with a where clause, or I could put an if in here. It doesn't really matter. Um, I suppose the example kind of likes you to put where stuff in so or you, you could argue that they like you to process it further so with an if so um, we'll, we'll do it um, with the where it's actually easier to do it with an if so I'll show you with both methods right so I'll do it with an if first um, so basically what I'm going to say now is if uh, my combo box cmb student filter dot selected value equals um, dr, now what is it, dr0, then basically display it. Right, so now that's going to filter, so it displayed them all. Right, so should, now I'm going to select Rick and nothing happened. Right, something kind of happened there. Now, what what I forgot to do was clear my combo box. So let's do that first. So LSTV filter lates dot items dot clear. Right, so that will clear it before it actually tries to display again. Right, so let's try it again. So Rick, there's Rick's. There's Nons. 
So that all works quite well. Now that is, to be honest, is slightly easier than messing around with the SQL. But I'll show you how to do it with the SQL as well. So I'm just going to comment that out now. Right. So I'm going to, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to write the SQL because it's, it's too much hassle. So I'm going to go to student ID, click on question mark here for filter, and lo and behold, down here you get a where clause. So I'm just going to copy that in and create a new line in my code for the SQL. So again, same sort of thing, ampersand, underscore, new line, hit enter, double quote, double quote. And did I paste, copy it? Let's see if I, yep, yeah, I did. Right, so now, where student ID equals Right, so that question mark has to be replaced basically now with, with the name of the combo box, dot selected value. Now, um, I have to then break the string with a quote, ampersands, then an, and a, uh, another quote. Now, I can put now put the name of the combo box in there. Now, if I just like CMB, now if it doesn't come up, it means you've cocked up. So, selected value. Right, so now my SQL is like that. So now it's filtering it on student ID there. So hopefully that should do exactly the same as what it did previously. Um, if it was a text field, I would need quotes around there. If I was searching on name, for instance, which is not a good idea anyway. So it's, it's doing it on the primary key. So let's try again. Right, so let's try Rick. It's, it's, it's done it. Okay, so what have we done then? So we've we've created a filter on that. Ah, this can happen. Yeah, what what have because when it closes, it the selected index changes. It gives it a bit of trouble when it tries to actually read that because the selected index changes. That has a value of nothing. It crashes. Right. So you may have noticed on other videos I had this. So if not cmb student filter dot selected value equals nothing then I'll just put a end if here right so basically I'll send it if it's if it's equal to if it's not nothing, then I'll do it. If it is, then I'll do it again. So let's try it again. Um, right, now I'll close it. Doesn't crash this time. Right, so what have we done then? So we basically uh, create a, a, a list view control, um, which basically has columns. So you make sure you do that by adding your details there. And then add them. Don't name them. Then you create the SQL to actually fill it up uh, using the data reader. Now the data reader basically gets the results of the SQL, so it can be many records or just one. And this is the crucial loop here that actually processes each one. Now you read off the data with this DR0. So it's basically reading the select here, that's zero, that's one, two, and three. And these are the values that are read off. Now when you this line is really important. That creates a new line in the list view control, and the the items, sorry, the, the sub items to add basically adds them going along a specific line. So this is the actual line number starting at zero, and then it adds them along in the other columns, and that is it. Um, so. I hope you enjoyed that high quality video and have I not recorded this?